So good morning and welcome to the third in our series of Know the Now of SharePoint getting ready for SharePoint conference, transforming business processes and content services. I'm Chris McNulty, joined today by Michaela Barrett here at Microsoft and also um, joined by our sponsor Avpoint this week, Dux Raymond Sai, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at Avpoint and a longstanding Microsoft Regional Director at MVP and expert in all things SharePoint and Office 365. So welcome. Dux, why don't you get us kicked off? Sure. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Michaela. And welcome, everybody, uh, for joining us today. Definitely looking forward to the upcoming SharePoint conference and really grateful for this opportunity to be a part of this amazing event. And for those that don't know AppPoint, uh, we've been an avid supporter of the SharePoint ecosystem and community. We've been around since 2001. We're headquartered in New Jersey. And really what we do today is help organizations like yourself accelerate your modern workplace success, especially now in the new world of Office 365 as you progress towards that journey, we're here to help you. And in the next slide, um, you know, just thinking through how we can support your organization. Certainly, if you're currently uh, with on-premises investment, thinking about moving, we can come in, look at your environment, uh, understand what your needs are. And if your first step is to uh, invest in a hybrid model or hybrid setup, we can definitely help you with that providing you that single pane of glass to manage both your on-prem and cloud-based SharePoint investment. And as you transition, as you take on all these new amazing workloads from Microsoft Teams and making sure that uh, Office 365 groups is well set up and established, we can definitely help you with that. We can help move you to Office 365 and help ensure that in your organization, you make it easy for your business users to do the right thing. Uh, we can help set up operational governance for your organization in your Office 365 tenant. And then last but not the least, as you move towards a journey with a cloud first model, our SaaS platform provides all the cloud collaboration uh, features that would support all the workloads that you're using in Office 365. We're committed to provide a platform that maximizes your efficiency and minimize risk as you take advantage of this phenomenal investment. So with that, um, just like you, I'm very excited to learn more about how you can uh, transform your processes and take it to the next level with Office 365 and SharePoint Online. So without further ado, uh, Chris, Michaela, let's get the show started. Thanks very much. So when we think about how the nature of work has changed and how we use Microsoft 365 to transform the nature and essence of how teamwork is done, it probably is worth checking in on how we think about the different technologies coming together in what we call the various loops of teamwork. Here on the left, we describe the inner loop. These are the people that you work with on a consistent basis. Um, the departments, the projects that you work on. In the inner loop, most of the time, the people in our regular circle there are known to us. And for communicating and collaborating with those teams, Microsoft Teams is our principal tool for driving that. There's also an outer loop of communication. When you need to work across a broad range of the organization, including divisions, departments, and people and entities who may go beyond um, your day-to-day -day circle. For that, Yammer is the essential tool for driving all of that. And as we see organizations transform the way teamwork is done by shifting communications into the inner loop and outer loop, um, this allows Outlook as your email client to return to its originally scheduled purpose, which is ubiquitous, always on targeted personal communications um, and calendar management. These all swirl around a trio of capabilities for managing data and content in Microsoft 365. OneDrive and SharePoint are the centerpiece for content collaboration in Microsoft 365. And Microsoft Stream provides the engine for being able to work with the latest and greatest content type, video, as well as supporting live events, such as the one that we're on today. So 
we've been talking a bit about Microsoft 365. It's probably important to introduce this for those of you who may be less familiar with Microsoft 365 since it's launched two years ago. Microsoft 365 is an integrated complete solution um, that brings together the best of Office 365, Windows 10 on the device, along with our cloud-based enterprise mobility and security suite to make sure that you can be productive, that you can manage devices and make sure that it's done securely from anywhere you need to be in the world. When we think about the core business missions for Microsoft 365, first and foremost, we see M365 as a creativity tool, allowing the power of the cloud to be brought into desktop and mobile and web experiences to allow people to be as creative as they need to be to drive forward the next generation of business. Microsoft 365 is also built for teamwork using capabilities such as Microsoft Teams and Yammer as we've discussed um, along with SharePoint, OneDrive and the rest of the Office 365 suite being able to allow you to work in dynamic teams at any scale from anywhere. Microsoft 365 is also tightly integrated into the Windows 10 experience so that we offer ease of deployment to allow a fully managed solution that extends everywhere from content creation through collaboration all the way on down to local devices. And finally, M365 brings cloud-based security and compliance to all other aspects of the suite. So we talked before that SharePoint and OneDrive are the centerpiece for content collaboration. And as SharePoint continues on towards its third decade as a product, we've really focused SharePoint's mission on being an engine for content management and being able to supply content throughout the suite. So that, for instance, when you're working with files through Microsoft Teams or Planner, or any other part of the suite, those files are maintained and sustained and managed from inside of SharePoint. SharePoint and OneDrive are also a tool for being able to forge powerful employee engagement and communication through intranets. SharePoint's mission statement is for the business is orchestrated around these four concepts. First and foremost, making it as easy as possible for people to be able to share and work together, file-centric collaboration, access to your files through OneDrive, wherever they live in Office 365. The second major aspect of SharePoint is as a tool for informing and engaging people. As people are spread across geographies and time zones and organizations, being able to bring everyone to literally the same page is more important than ever before. And SharePoint provides a powerful means for being able to forge intelligent experiences that keep people advised and aligned to the mission of your organization. The third mission for SharePoint and OneDrive is about transforming business processes. New tools such as Power Apps and Flow provide powerful ways to allow any information worker to change the way work gets done, whether it's simple approval or complex orchestrated processes that bring together the best of Power Apps, first line experiences, cloud-based AI, approvals, and more. Finally, SharePoint and OneDrive provide a tool for bringing together collective knowledge, being able to forge communities of interest um, across the suite. All of these are supported on a foundation across our Office 365 data centers, allowing information protection and manageability for the IT pro, as well as providing tools to allow developers and makers to be able to extend our core capabilities and develop new solutions, whether you're an individual developer, an organization, or one of our many, many, many software partners, such as Avpoint. SharePoint sits at the centerpiece of Microsoft 365's cloud. As we mentioned before, it provides a content engine that allows me to unlock document collaboration so that when I work on documents inside of tools like Excel, Word, and OneDrive, 
SharePoint provides the interface to be able to store and provide those files as needed. SharePoint also provides content to be shared across institute or uh, applications such as Teams and Outlook. OneDrive provides a unified experience to all of the files across all of the Teams as well as personal repositories and shared links wherever I go on desktop, on web, and across mobile devices. SharePoint additionally provides content to unlock employee engagement in tools like Yammer and Stream. And SharePoint also is the engine that empowers creating portals and digital workspaces to drive further employee engagement. SharePoint also sits on capabilities that allow us to offer cloud-based security, machine learning using the Microsoft Graph, and extensibility using interfaces such as the SharePoint framework. When we think about the ways that business process are transformed, there's really three things we need to think about. When you're looking around your organization, hopefully seeing the tools that we show you today and trying to figure out a candidate for how information is going to be orchestrated, you need to ask yourself three questions. Where's my data? What processes do I have? And what interfaces am I gonna create around that? So the first question, um, as we've outlined, is answered by SharePoint. SharePoint provides a rich home for being able to provide not just files, but also data in the form of SharePoint lists to be able to be used in my business process. The second principal tool is Microsoft Flow. Microsoft Flow is an orchestration engine that allows me to connect not just to Office 365, but hundreds of cloud and on-premises based sources um, to be able to take advantage of common scenarios such as approvals, alerts, data transfers, and copies. And finally, using tools like Power Apps, Microsoft Forms, and Power BI, you're able to create transformative experiences that extend into Microsoft Teams to any application surface where it needs to serve, be shown. So it's probably a good point to introduce the rich palette of capabilities that we have in Microsoft 365. SharePoint lists and libraries provide a powerful tool to be able to orchestrate personal and teamwork based data, not just for a handful of files, but being able to work with information at cloud scale. Thousands, if not millions of documents and items can be housed inside SharePoint libraries and lists. Our connected framework allows you to integrate hundreds of applications and services as part of process automation across Office 365. Microsoft Flow provides the orchestration engine. We use Microsoft Flow heavily inside of SharePoint to automate common scenarios such as document or page approvals. In addition to the in-product reliance on Microsoft Flow, you can extend flow with dozens of templates, many authored by Microsoft and many by our extended community to deal with common integration scenarios. You can also build your own flows from scratch, connecting out to any of the data sources we've mentioned before. Power Apps provides the principal tool for, the, for building custom data interfaces inside SharePoint and beyond. Power Apps is the tool used to build forms that ride on top of your SharePoint lists, as well as allowing you to build no code applications that can be deployed to web, desktop, and mobile devices, where one, app, one publication of an application can instantly be shared to hundreds and thousands of devices, regardless of operating system. And finally, in business process, Using the connected frameworks that we have, you're able to reach out to tools like Microsoft Graph, Power BI, and Azure Cognitive Services to take your business process to the next level, being able to bring superpowers into the mainstream for everyday information work. So SharePoint lists are the foundational element for being able to bring business process together. You can store up to 30 million items in SharePoint lists. And we talk an awful lot about 
casual examples to track um, registrations or t-shirt sizes, but thousands of organizations use SharePoint List as the foundation for common scenarios such as issue tracking, problem resolution, healthcare management, and more. It provides simple tools that allow you to organize your data directly inside of the browser, easily shared to anyone who's connected to your Office 365 team. Each row can have its own permissions. You can enhance your data with a rich set of columns, something that we've been expanding um, of late, not just for data types, but as well as the formats, as you can see as the examples here on screen and in the demos Michaela is gonna show you momentarily. And those lists are easily customized and automated using Power Apps and Flow. So now I'm gonna turn things over to Michaela. Thanks, Chris. Hi, my name is Michaela. I'm, I'm a program manager on SharePoint team sites. Uh, for the last two to three years, I've been focusing on lists and libraries and ways that we can improve the experience as well as get uh, pieces of metadata into the lists and libraries and then ways that we can leverage that a little bit more. So I'm going to share my screen and go into a demo. It looks, it's appearing for me. Can I get a confirmation from Chris that it's showing yes, for you too? Yes, we can see Wonderful. it. Wonderful, perfect. So what I've landed in here is my team site called Retail Promotions. And within the team site, I'm in a document library called Functional Design Docs. And this is a space where my team will get all of our specs ready. And so there's a lot of collaboration going on in this document library. And you can see that we have a couple of customizations, a different um, columns. We have a little bit of formatting going on. But this library can get much better uh, to make my team more productive. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go into my new menu here, and I'm going to upload a template. And so this template is what my team uses to make sure that all of our formatting is the same and the look and feel of every spec that we create is identical. So I can go in and we actually see that I have the functional design document template added here, which I added just by clicking add template and selecting it from the template that my team likes to use. What you'll notice is that when that template's added, we're keeping all of the existing templates that come out of the box. And so this is a feature that we released a couple months ago. And you could go in and actually edit this new menu to make it look like how you want it to. So I could go in, I could drag and drop the template that's most important to me to the top. And I can hide the Word document, I can hide Excel, and Forms and OneNote are not important to my team. What I really want is my custom template along with a blank PowerPoint template. So I can hit Save, and when I drop down the new menu, we see it looking exactly how I need it to look for my team. I can go into the Edit menu, and I can have the template that I uploaded correspond to any content type that's enabled for this document library. So if I go into my Functional Design Document template, I can change that content type. And so the default content type for this library is document, but I have folder and Dublin core columns also enabled. So I could choose whatever I need it to be, and I can hit save. And so now whenever someone uploads or uses that template, they will be able to go through and it'll create that content type that I've set it to. In addition to having the template, when we landed on this library, we noticed a couple of customizations going on. And so I'm super excited to show off a friendly formatter that we've released where I can go into the blocked column and I have my thing right there. I can go into my column settings and format this column. So with one click, I'm able to format this column to show me everything that's blocked. But blocked in this scenario is actually bad. So I'm gonna go in here and if it's blocked, I'm going to have it show up as bright red. And if it's not blocked, I'm going to have it show as green. And so we can now see within a couple of seconds that I'm able to quickly identify which, which items are blocked. Now, this column is important to me. I want my team to be able to see it as quickly as possible. So I'm going to drag and drop that column over right next to the title so that my team sees it immediately. In addition to this, I can pivot my data to be based on this blocked column. So I can go in and group by blocked so that we can quickly identify which files are blocked. And we see these three are indeed blocked. 
And in this view, one of my favorite things to do is I can actually select that entire group there and I can go in and bulk edit that metadata. So if I needed to change the effort or I needed to change that review date, I could actually go through and change it for all of those items at once. <coughs> And so this column, this uh, view is looking pretty good. I can go in and actually save this view so that whenever my team lands in this space, they don't have to do the dragging and dropping or the formatting that I've just done. They will just land and see this view that I've seen. So I can do blocked and I'm making it a public view so that whenever someone comes here, they can click, quickly access it. So I hit save and that's great. Now this library is looking pretty good. Uh, there's one thing that's annoying me, though, is that I can't read the entire title of some of my items. So I'm going to actually drag and drop this column so I can read all of my titles and make sure that nothing is cut off. And so I want you to notice something that changed here. We see this asterisk appearing. And so that indicates that the view property has been changed. We recently announced back in um, Ignite that the view property will now contain each of the column widths. And so this is being stored in my DOM local storage, but if I want to be able to always see that, that column width where I can read the entire title, I'm able to save this as part of the view property. And now whenever my team lands here across any device and any browser, they'll always be able to read the entire title, which is super convenient and, and very, very easy for people to access here. Uh, and so the next thing that I want to show here is when we landed on this document library, I pointed out a couple of customizations going on and I showed off the friendly formatter, but we might have noticed a couple other things going on, such as these yellow, these yellow uh, blocks here indicating required information. And so this is a, a setting that you can change in the column settings. So when a piece of metadata is super important, you can list it as required. And that will mean that the piece of metadata is important. And so we want to make that as easy as possible for someone to fill out. So they can actually go in and actually click on that yellow, yellow box and it will open up the details pane and it'll quickly show this file's missing required information. And when you scroll down, you can see, oh, okay, it's the review date that's missing and fill it in. Now this is an awesome view to be able to edit things, but this only works in the current view that you're in, right? What if you have missing metadata across different folders or hidden in different views or in columns that aren't showing right now. You can actually go into here and click on the files that need attention to you. And this will be recursive across the entire document library. And so it's showing as empty right now, which we'll address that later. Uh, but it will show you everything missing required properties across that entire document library through all of the folders and through all of the different views that you have. The next thing I want to show is a new uh, field type that we've added. So I can go in and add a column right here, and I'm going to choose the location column. And so this is a new field type that we have shipped, and I want this to be the customer location. And notice here that we have seven different properties associated with this field type. So when I create an item and add this, I'll automatically get those seven different properties, but I can decide which ones are actually important for me to see. So I'm going to choose city and state, and I'm going to hit save. And so we'll see those getting populated as columns. So when I go in and actually edit an item, I can choose customer location and I can put in Microsoft. And it fills in all of those locations for me automatically here. So we see that we get the Vancouver, we get BC, and then in the background, we're, we're collecting those seven different field types that can be used as I'll show in a little bit later for some really cool things going on uh, and some customizations. Now the entire point of this document library, I'm going back to my all documents views, is to get these specs ready for my team to finalize. And so the way that we like to do this is using a uh, couple out of the box flows that we've shipped. And so I want to point out that I have not done anything in the background with these flows. This is coming automatically with my library out of the box. And so the first thing I can do is go in and set a reminder on the review date field that I have. So I can go in and open up that review date, and we're going to see the new flow panel pop out. 
And I'll actually be able to send myself a reminder every time one of these design docs is coming up for the review date. And so I want to be noticed five days in advance. So I have a full week to make sure that I'm able to check out everything and that it's actually ready for a review. So I click create, and this will now send me an email digest of every single file that's ready for that review date within five days beforehand. And you can set as many as you want. If you want five, four, three, you can, you can set a bunch. The other scenario that we like to uh, run through a lot is getting a lightweight approval flow. And so I can go in on this document, and if I go to my flow, I'm going to see this request sign-off pop-up. And so this will allow me to get feedback from my peers to say, hey, can you sign off on this? Does this look okay? And, and the way that we like to do this is for kind of a, a lightweight approval on different areas that people on my team own. So I can actually send this to my coworker, Nestor, and say, does page six And so this is kicking off that email to Nestor where he'll get that approval workflow in his inbox and we'll be able to actually go through and either approve or reject. And then I want to point out something that's happened kind of in the background here. Well, not yet. Uh, but when we're doing and kicking off this flow, it will create a column for us so that we can actually track the status of each one of those approval kickoffs that we do. And so this is a quick way that my team likes to work through these documents and get a quick and easy feedback on everything. And so Chris had also done a great job introducing some of the list functionalities. And I want to run through super quickly here a couple of new list features that we have either recently announced or we're in the process of shipping. And so to do that, I'm going to jump over into my retail account library. And we see that we land here in a list. I'm sorry, I said library before. And this list is looking okay. We see we have a little bit of holiday display formatting going on. We're leveraging that new location column that I showed off in the document library. But hidden behind another view, we have a really awesome customization view. And so what this is doing here is actually pulling from the different field types. We see that we have that location column showing actually the map view. We have each row getting formatted with the row formatter that we announced at Ignite, and it makes the list extremely easy to view. And so one of the most common questions I would get is, this is really awesome, but I don't want to have to create all of those columns again. I don't want to have to go through and figure out how to do a row formatting. So how can I just create this list without going through and redoing everything that's already been set up for retail accounts? And so we have a new feature that we'll be shipping hopefully at the end of this month where you're able to create a list from another existing list or you can create a list from Excel. And so if I drop down this new menu in my site contents, I can click list and we see this new UI here. And so the first one is creating a list from Excel. And so you can actually go through and choose an Excel file, pick a table from that Excel file and import that into Excel. What I want to show off now is creating from an existing list that you've already created anywhere in SharePoint. For this demo, I'm going to create from the retail accounts list we were just in, in this site. But note that I can actually create it from any site that we have that I have access to here. Uh, so the point of this demo, I'm going to do the retail promotions. I'm going to choose that retail accounts list that we had just looked at. And I'm going to name it local retail accounts. North America. And so I can click create. And what this is doing is pulling over all of the forms, all of the columns that I've already created, and the formatting that I've created. So we land here and we see the columns already appearing out of the box here. So if I go in and actually create a new item, that it is ready. My sales target is 23,000. And the location is Microsoft Store. I can hit save. 
And so we see it populating as we're used to, but I can go in and actually use that customized view that was in that existing list. And so without doing anything behind the scenes, I'm able to create this list from my existing list and pull over the most important pieces of that list. And so I'm, this is awesome, but to improve the collaboration around the list, we integrate with teams. And so what I just switched over to is the Retail Promotions General Teams channel. And we see here that I have some tabs coming up, the conversations, files, retail accounts. And this is the list that I was just in. And we notice it looks very similar to what we just experienced. It's actually the exact same. I can add columns. I'm able to open in SharePoint. I can export to Excel. I'm able to filter and use the details panes I'm used to. But I'm also able to go in and still leverage that view that my team's used to looking at. And so it's really powerful to bring this into Teams because we can pop open this chat tab and we're actually able to go through and start collaborating in a, in a chat format on this list. And so we see everything that we're used to seeing in SharePoint, but of course it works in the experience that my team's actually collaborating in. And so we got a lot of new functionality coming out. I'm super excited to show off just a quick highlight. I'm gonna pass it back off to Chris here. Or actually, if he just wants to pull up the, um, the deck, we can do a quick recap as well. Yeah, so just to recap here, we did an easy list creation where we showed off being able to create lists from Excel. And then what we really highlighted was being able to create a list from a existing list. And as a note, this is not shipped yet. Our target is to ship at the end of this month. We highlighted the location column. This is shipped. Uh, very exciting to be able to plug it in into the different formattings that we've shown or, you know, outside the scope of this topic is using composite apps where you can actually go through and, and figure out um, what that location looks like in the map website. And as you see here, it works as a real column, of course. So you're able to sort, filter, group by on it, and it will work with your meeting rooms within your directory as well. And then I show how this integrates in Teams. So you're able to add a list as any page in Teams to a Teams channel. And so you don't have to cut and paste. You're able to just work in the space that you feel most comfortable in, whether it's Teams or SharePoint, and you can have a seamless interaction between both of them. Any changes you make in Teams will automatically happen in SharePoint and vice versa. And then we showed off the conditional formatting. I showed off the friendly formatter where we used a Boolean field of the yes and no. That friendly formatter also works with um, four other field types, as you can see in the screenshot here with uh, dates. And it makes it super easy to add the formatting. Of course, if you want to be more detailed and not use the friendly formatter, we support the JSON blob so that you can add um, action buttons or anything that you need to make your list tailor to your needs. And then the view formatting, this is uh, what we announced at Ignite, where we are able to have the conditional formatting applied and you can have multi-line displays as we showed in the formatting that I highlighted. Um, in addition, you're able to add flow buttons so you could actually, in this formatting, create a button or an icon that will trigger a flow. So just like how I showed off some of those out of the box flows, you could imagine clicking a button to have those work. Um, and then of course these views translate into teams seamlessly so that you don't need to worry about looking at different lists in different formats. And then one thing that I wanna note here that comes up a lot is the predictive indexing work that we have done on lists. So the lists that I was showing were um, all under you know, 20,000 items. They were pretty small, as you could see. Um, and so what I want to point out here is that we have done a predictive indexing on lists of any size. And as Chris had mentioned, you can add up to 30 million items in the list. And we do an auto indexing on the lists that are up to 20,000. And we will make sure that things such as the filters pane and the functionality that I just showed works in lists of all sizes. And so it's important to point out that you can, of course, create your own indexing on the list that's most important to you. Uh, we will do a predictive indexing out of the box so that you still get the features that I just showed off without having to do any of that manual work behind the scenes. Uh, coming up is right now we are working on, uh, we have a vision of supporting API access to large data sets that is not done yet, but it is on our top of mind and hopefully will be announced soon. So 
being able to work with foundational listen libraries as as you've seen is an essential step in being able to reinvent the way processes are done across your organization. The next steps are being able to build more sophisticated processes and interfaces. Um, being able to take advantage of our integration to allow for getting feedback or approvals on documents as they're worked on in your organization. <clears throat> Those, those processes are also extended throughout the suite. So the same kinds of things you can do to get an approval or a sign off on a document in SharePoint obviously shows up inside OneDrive as well. Power Apps is, as I'll show you here in just a minute, the essential tool for being able to move beyond the SharePoint interface, as strong as it is, to be able to integrate and add even more customizations on top of it. We also have capabilities that allow you to uh, use web parts to enrich data gathering using tools like Microsoft Forms. When you need to um, gather data from people who live outside of your organization um, or from anonymous users, Microsoft Forms provides a way of doing that and forms can be tightly coupled into the SharePoint page experiences and extended into Teams as a result. So, that said, let's take a look at how Power Apps and Flow come together in this environment. Let me... So here I am inside of the research finance site. And one of the lists that we have here, similar to some of the things Michaela was showing us earlier, is our research projects list, where I can see um, all of the projects that my team has been working on and when they are subject for review. We've applied some formatting here as well. If I'm looking at Microsoft Flow, I can quickly build new flows off of the data on this list. Michaela showed you before how to set a reminder, but if I wanted something that goes beyond having a reminder, I can create a flow right here. And when I say that I want to create a flow, I can see a filtered list of the templates that are available for me. So for instance, if I wanted to get a manager's approval for a selected item, I can select that. This will bring me into the flow designer. And as you can see, Microsoft Flow understands my context of what data I was working with, what my security credentials are, and what kinds of processes I might need to bring into it based on the template. All I have to do here is say create flow. And the flow is saved to my list. If I wanted to make further changes, I could come here into the edit screen and see what's happening inside of that template. Anytime I pick an item, um, you, the idea of a flow is that I have triggers which start the process and then actions which follow in sequence. And your flows can be as simple or as complex as you need be. You can introduce branching and looping, parallel tracks. Um, right now, you the logic of this flow is fairly easy to read on screen. Once I pick an item, it's going to reach out to Office 365 to get my profile, to look up who my manager is, and then it's going to, um, um, based on what it sees there, it's going to start an approval cycle. Um, the approval cycle here is, is going to be based on um, whoever my manager is, based on who was looked up, it's going to send them a reminder to go in and approve that. And based on what happens at the end of it, if yes, it'll be marked as approved. If no, I'll also be informed of it as well. And so that's all I really need to do to be able to orchestrate that. So now if I select an item and I come inside flow, I'll now see my request manager approval process is here. I can start the flow. And since it's running for the first time, it asks me to continue. And it asks me to take a look at this, please. Approve this. And Microsoft Flow is going to manage the rest of the process from there on. So Flow is a great way to build some sort of process based on approvals or alerts that I might need in my organization. But sometimes I want to build something that's more immersive. And for that, we make reliance on Power Apps. So if I look on the command bar, you will see there are two modes of operation here. Um, I can customize the form that I'm going to use on this list, or I can build a new app. So let's look at what happens when I choose customize forms. 
and to save a little bit of time, I've already clicked that up in another screen. When I say that I want to customize a form, the Power App Designer opens up inside of your browser. And Power Apps, again, just like Flow, understands my credentials and my connections, and it brings all of those into a template for a single screen form. And you can see the look out of what's, you can see the appearance of what's here on the screen. Um, I can see all the data elements that are here on the form. And so I may quickly say, I want to change this into a two column view. Let's drag this across the screen. Let's put a background fill on that. And that's going to be a little hard to read. So let's change the text for that box. I can also decide which fields I want to work with. So by choosing um, which fields, I can say I may not want to show the sign off status in this, so I can remove it. Um, and if I want the project status to appear higher on the screen, I can just drag it up under the title. Under the title. And the form will automatically reflow to match the configurations I've added here. You can also add interactivity. So if I wanted to take a button, I can add it to the screen. And then wire up any of the actions that I might want to take when this is selected. So here's a very quick example of a form that I've customized. Once I have finished that, I save it. Power Apps maintains a full history of all the versions of all of the forms that I build. And if I'm ready to work with it, I can publish that to SharePoint. And once that form is published, it now becomes available to anyone who clicks on an item in the list. So when I choose, for example, our barbecue drone here, our mythical device that will hover over your backyard picnics to keep the kids entertained and to monitor the temperature of the meat and so on and so forth. You can see I'm now using the custom form that I just built inside Power Apps. I have a button that does nothing, but I can come here and you know, if I want to change the status of this, to saying this is now going to be active and my review date is going to, we're going to move this forward this for this year to make it 2019 and save those changes. Everything that I'm working with inside Power Apps is going to be applied in real time. Power Apps also allows me to build immersive mobile applications. And in a fashion very similar to what I just showed you, if I say that I want to create an app, Power Apps will come up and build an out of the box three screen application for me. I'm not going to walk through that whole process because we want to reserve a little bit of time. I'll show you as an example here in just a minute. But those apps, once they are built and saved, are immediately available to everyone in my tenant. So without needing to um, go to a professional developer to build different code bases for iOS, Android, and web, and then register each of those separately in different app stores, all of the users in my tenant have access, if I choose to, to all of the applications that I create and publish without having to um, work around a complicated deployment process. <clears throat> One of the many other places that I can deploy a Power App to is inside Microsoft Teams. So here at Contoso Electronics, I have a site that I've used to help keep track of the test results we have and some of the electronic devices that we're working on with our airline partners. And in our example, if someone sees a defect in equipment, we want them to take a picture and send it into us. And you can see the document library here. This is this information could be uploaded, but it's being captured directly inside Power Apps. And I'm using Microsoft Flow to orchestrate a process when I see a new image coming in to scan it and tag it using Azure Cognitive Services to see what kind of thing am I seeing in this. And you can see we've seen defects coming in from overhead bins and from um, airline carts. And all of that recognition is being done for me automatically inside of, um, inside of SharePoint. 
But we mentioned before that Microsoft Teams at the outset is a hub for teamwork. It provides an easy way for me to be able to integrate and automate all of these processes here. So what I can show you right here is a Power App, which has been built and extended into Microsoft Teams. Now I can run this directly on a mobile device or through the web. I can also gain access to it through my Teams client. So here you can see an example of those three screen mobile apps that are easily built. So uh, the template that you get gives me an ability to go in and browse data and to go in and view it. And if I wanted to edit that data, all those changes are going to be made and, and saved live inside of the form for me. Um, we've also built a problem tracker. So here inside a mobile device, I can take a picture of something and process and send it in to be automatically processed. The magic of this is inside Microsoft Flow. So every time I add a new image, I have built a flow that looks for that file capture to go get the content and reach over to an Azure Cognitive Services model that I've already built to be able to tell me what tags do I see inside of the image. The custom vision um, Cognitive Services APIs sound very difficult, but they're really a mainstream tool. This is the model, and this model is built as simply as by being able to add more images, say what tag they should go with. I'm obviously not going to upload this cartoon here, and clicking the train button. This registers this model as an Azure service so that all I need to do is pass a new picture into it. It'll be compared to the existing model, and then based on the results that I see, pass that information back in the flow. Um, so we capture what we're seeing coming out of that. And if we are more than 60% confident that what I'm seeing is, um, is an airline cart or a baggage tray, um, we're going to update the properties of the file and use a switch statement to be able to tell people what happens if we see a cart, to be able to direct someone on the fly to a mobile notification. And then we pay that all forward by being able to write that information back into the dialog inside Teams. So you can see here the running dialog that we have. Um, I am tagging my manager, Dan Holm, to be responsible for all of the defects that we're seeing on airplanes these days. But by being able to move information using Power Apps to capture them, flow to orchestrate them, and communicate back into my team so we can determine which things need to take action. And I can also extend those libraries directly here into Microsoft Teams. So similar to what Michaela showed you before, um, I don't have to leave the comfort of Microsoft Teams to go find the files that I need to work with if I wanted to reinspect a single image. My entire library is available to me here inside Microsoft Teams, regardless of where I go. So many organizations have been successful with using Power Apps and SharePoint to transform their organizations. One we're particularly proud of is NASCAR. Um, NASCAR describes their daily operations as being a matter of traveling to 34 places around North America a year to stage an event the size of the football Super Bowl. Um, so they have people who arrive at a track um, for the first time every week. They use a SharePoint based intranet to orchestrate all the information about who the contacts are, what the standings, what the issues are. And by being able to use Power Apps, they're able to use a much more comfortable device for their staff who's standing around pit row than asking people to open up a laptop on the hood of a race car or write something on paper and hope they remember to log it back in to headquarters at Charlotte when they get back to their hotel room at night. And you can learn more with our resources on the slides we're going to share with you momentarily. Lego is another example of an organization who's used Power Apps and SharePoint to transform the way they get work done. At Lego, their principal developer is not a developer at all, but rather a regular, everyday information worker. She's a wonderful person, I've met her, but she built this application on her own without having to resort to a developer to be able to track problems that are seen in parts and assign them to the right people to resolve the defect. 
um, they've been able to bring together a really rich experience that they can extend into web and into mobile devices rather than residing doing what they previously did, which was maintaining a master Excel file that they would email around to people as they needed to edit it. And Seneca companies was able to greatly reduce their customer, uh, increase their customer satisfaction by using Power Apps to be able to track and report on the status of their field operations um, and being able to instantly email um, their customers with the results of field inspection and service on the fly instead of waiting two to four weeks to go back and have a report manually generated out of headquarters. So you can learn more about these capabilities in our Business Apps Resource Center at aka.ms slash SharePoint Biz Apps. And if you are working with managing um, documents and files at scale, our Content Services Resource Center is going to be your best bet. We have a heavy, heavy, heavy roadmap. This is a huge investment area for us. As we shared at Ignite last year, um, this was the full list of capabilities um, that we roadmapped and delivered in 2018. Um, as we have turned the calendar here into 2019, um, we're continuing to invest in the scenarios that we've mentioned in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, um, including extending Power Apps custom forms in and around the SharePoint mobile application, bringing new triggers and actions into flow, and even more to come. There's a lot that's on our mind, and we're hoping to be able to share more of that with you at the SharePoint conference coming up here in just over two months. So if you wanna learn more about the future of teamwork and how SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, OneDrive, and Office 365 are essential tools for it, we can't wait to see you at SharePoint conference coming up in May in Las Vegas. Registration is open now. There will be hundreds of speakers and sessions and workshops and exhibitors and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. You can learn more at SharePointConference.com. Some of the sessions that we'll be um, presenting at SPC to pay attention to, um, I'll be presenting a keystone session on business apps with Microsoft 365 along um, with my colleague Chucks. Michaela and Tejas will be talking about how to use team sites. Um, we also would like to recommend three of our community members. Dave Feldman, um, a Microsoft MVP, will be presenting a code-free customization session. Laura Rogers will be running workshops and sessions on Power Apps and Flow. And Conwell Kippel is going to be presenting information on how to build applications to transform your internet. So we hope look to see you at the conference. I am just going to take a minute here to check the Q&A to see if you have any questions. We have just a minute or two left. We have a lot yeah. of great questions, Chris. Uh, here's a couple of you don't mind me reading it for you. Sure. Uh, one question is, is synchronization between lists and document libraries on the roadmap? For example, when a document is uploaded or changed in one library, the changes are reflected on another library in another site. Um, so that is not anything I can really share right now. Um, we, we have been working kind of a little differently. Um, if you look at how document management works across the suite, rather than doing a lot with security and permissions and management by copying and moving files around, although you can still do it, um, we've adopted um, compliance labels to allow me to be able to um, change the compliance posture of a document by keeping it in the same place, allowing you to change the permissions on a single file by being able to share it in place. Um, so we think this is actually a much more flexible way than making lots of copies and running a synchronization engine. Got it. Uh, next question we have is, how does Power Apps on the list view uh, via mobile, we're, we were advised to build the app as a Canvas app starting from Power Apps and attaching it to the list. So, um, yeah, if you do that, your app is not going to be registered in the command bar. Um, if you need to make sure that the app is registered in the command bar, the simplest way to do it is by starting inside SharePoint to create a new app. 
if I'm creating a single form app, it's going to audit. The only way to do it is by creating that single page form inside of a inside of the SharePoint list. If I'm building a multi screen app, um, it'll be a little bit simpler and you can register that app as a view inside of the list. Guy, we'll, we'll take it one more. Uh, I know we're on top of the hour here. Uh, can Power Apps and Flows be shared externally now? Um, so if the if what you mean shared, ex it depends how you're thinking about sharing externally. So Power Apps and Flows can be encapsulated into digital finals. Um, so if you have a Power App that works well in one organization and you would like to make a copy of it, you can bring it out into a file, send it to someone, and they can attach that into their tenant. Um, we are very much working on scenarios of being able to bring external guests into Power Apps and Flow. Uh, no dates to share yet, but we hope to have more coming up on that this spring. Awesome. Boy, it's 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 an amazing session. We just had a lot of great information and definitely all this uh, information will be shared on demand and uh, hopefully everyone can join us at the upcoming SharePoint conference and for additional resources. Uh, Chris, if you don't mind clicking one more, we got tons of resources for you. Certainly the uh, uh, the SharePoint team, the Microsoft team has a lot of amazing stuff. And also if you want to look for more, uh, just go to appoint.com slash resources and we have a lot of SharePoint. Flow, Power Apps, Office 365, and Teams resources as well. So with that, thanks everybody for joining us in this webinar and make sure you join us on the next webinar itself or the next uh, webinar uh, series. But uh, we look forward to see you at the SharePoint conference. So Chris, Michaela, thank you again for this opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Zach.